about the Utah State Historical Conference, and they are focusing on rural Utah Western issues. So if you had a chance to see that, um, uh -huh. connecting things like public lands, and so um, they're going to be addressing that from an historical perspective. Um, which is a lot different than a political perspective. So some of you may enjoy that. And then please put on your calendar the next Governor's Rural Partnership Board meeting is scheduled for Monday, November the 28th. That's the day right after the Thanksgiving holiday. And um, we don't, we have, we think we know what location it is, but I'm just going to ask you to have a hold the date on November 28th, and then we'll send out more specific information in the next couple weeks. That's it. All right. Thank you very much, uh, James. Are you are you up and ready to go? I, I'm here, although I don't know that I'm connected to. Uh, I think that we'll have to have you put up the uh, PowerPoint. I can change my screen to you. I believe you're titled under Governor's Office of Economic Development. If you're ready to go, I'll switch over to you. If that's all right. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I guess while we're waiting for that to come up, we'll uh, give you a little introduction to myself. I uh, appreciate the privilege of being here in this department. It's uh, been a great experience so far, and it's only been five weeks. I, I appreciate Jake's um, mentorship and and Dan and and what he's done in the past, and of course Linda and her leadership here. And so far, I hope I can at least live up to their expectations. Uh, but it's been a very, very positive experience for me. Um, also, uh, it's been great for me to get off the what we, we might call the beaten path of I-15, the I-15 corridor, and finding I'm discovering places I've never seen before in the state, which is a shame for having to be having been here for 26 years. So it's pretty exciting for me to get out there and, and visit uh, with you. And uh, um, I get I, I'm looking forward to getting getting to know more folks out there. Are we set there, Jake? Uh, did, you should have gotten a, a little uh, request on your computer, I believe, to uh, start sharing your screen. And if not, we'll just uh, go uh, and continue to go with go with mine. How about we just go with mine real quick, and you can just let me know when you advance. Oh, there it is. There it is. We figured it out. We got it. <laughs> All right. So does that mean I'm in control, or uh, control? I'm in I'm in control right now. So I'll just just let me know when to click through. Okay. Why don't you go ahead up to the slideshow there? Very good. All right. Well, um, yeah, one more click there. Essentially what we want to do today, or from uh, as part of my assignment, is to kind of go over BEAR, the BEAR program, and what uh, what we're doing up, up to today as far as the contracts are concerned. Of course, you folks all know about BEAR expansion and retention programs and, and its purpose in, uh, in uh, assisting business and facilitating growth in the rural counties. Uh, if you'll go ahead and click that one more there, Jake. <clears throat> we have uh, 25 rural counties that are participating this this uh, fiscal year, and uh, that means that uh, all the rural counties that are involved uh, in one way or another. That means that uh, you can go ahead and click through all of those next two or three clicks there, Jake. <clears throat> What you'll find is that we have some limited funds this year at $17,000 per county. Most counties have opted to take that full amount, and we encourage everybody to use that to its fullest extent so that we can ask for more next time. Um, all of the contracts so far have been issued. Uh, that means they have uh, been sent out. You should have... <laughs> Hey, that was uh, sweet. <laughs> uh, um, 
but um, also what that means is it's in your hands to get back to us in a, in a signed format. So far, I have only received five uh, contracts signed and returned so far. So I encourage you to uh, kind of expedite that, get that ball rolling, and make sure those signatures are on, uh, on the contract so that we can execute them fully here on our side once you send them to me. Okay, next slide. I want to go over the invoice. Um, the invoice will be coming to you uh, shortly. What we want to attempt to do uh, is clearly is to give it to you uh, two weeks before the due date. Uh, that was not that hasn't happened given that the contracts are a little bit late getting out, and we have a deadline coming right up here within less than two weeks. But uh, just want to familiarize you with the uh, invoice. You'll see on the top there um, uh, your critical information about the, the entity and the dates and the quarter that we're, we're filing in. We appreciate your accuracy on those things. So those are minor details, but sometimes they're missed. Uh, next clip there, Jake. <clears throat> um, please pay attention to uh, the various points of description. These all match uh, your contract. So any amounts of uh, money that, uh, that um, you have in your contract will, will be categorized in such a way that it uh, relates to this invoice at the same time. Uh, one arrow that I didn't put uh, is an arrow I should have put is to the hashtag right next to the amount up there. That, of course, means the number of. And uh, we appreciate you putting any uh, number that is correlated to the number of visits, for example, that you make so that we can uh, see how those things are quantified across the dollars that we that are bill, being billed at the same time. But that's pretty self-explanatory for those categories and how they would relate to your contract. Um, and of course, a total at the bottom there. One more click there, Jake, and you'll see that uh, we would like to invite you to attach any supporting documentation there. Um, the uh, receipts that, that might be uh, involved in, in, in various meetings and, and, um, and uh, the like. Especially, we'll click to the next page, and you'll see our, our quarterly report. And of course, we would want this uh, to be accurate and a, a part of the attachment uh, with regard to quarterly billing. Um, give it a click there, Jake. <coughs> Um, if you'll just pay attention to the details, uh, on our end, it's important for us in, in reporting and uh, making reports to those who are, are, are in charge of these programs and, and in charge of us, over us, that, that, we're, that we're reporting accurately to them. One part of this quarterly report that will be updated for you is, again, a number, a number to quantify. So if you, for example, are making a consultation to what we don't have on this correct form, is the number of uh, consultations that you have uh, completed. We, we want to add that to the quarterly report. So, you, oh, and the hours, excuse me, the numbers and the hours, uh, the hours of consultation there. Thank you, Linda. Um, so uh, we will add that to the quarterly report, and we appreciate that uh, you would uh, be diligent and be accurate with all of your uh, uh, numbers on this quarterly report. I've also put down the schedule. That's a part of your contract as well. You can see that your first quarter is coming up in less than two weeks. Um, <clears throat> we don't want you to fret too much about that. Uh, we do want you to uh, make your report, if you can make your report, if you're already active in, in, uh, in your bear visits and so forth, and consultations. Uh, but if you can't quite make that uh, quarter deadline, uh, we will hope that you will uh, um, gather all your information, all that pertinent information, and put it in the second quarter so that we can uh, uh, get you uh, uh, get your money back to you. So don't uh, be too uh, terribly worried about the September 30th deadline, uh, but in the meantime, concentrate on the next one so that we can uh, get that one done for you. Okay. Next one. 
Just a couple of clicks there. Thanks, that will do it. All right, um, another one of my responsibilities and new assignments is over the recycling market developing development zone. Uh, this is a very interesting thing that I think I've learned an awful lot about that uh, I think is a great opportunity that's probably underutilized uh, throughout the state as far as I can tell um, from what I've learned. But uh, this is an opportunity for those who are involved in the recycling business to get some uh, incentive uh, for their business for their, uh, their recycling uh, operations. 5% of the Utah state income tax credits uh, for the cost of machinery and equipment. That could be very, very significant given that some of that equipment is uh, very, very expensive. Uh, anybody would want to take a 5% rebate on something like that. Uh, and then a 20% up to uh, of the income tax credit up to $1,000 uh, um, on eligible operating expenses. And generally that means wages or any other operating expenses that a business incurs. Um, so, you know, that's an additional tack on of $2,000 of credit <clears throat> towards their income tax. Um, the recycling marketing uh, market development zones are uh, on five-year terms. In other words, if you are, um, if you would apply for, have applied for it in 2012, the terms would uh, terminate in 2017, which means that uh, the recycling zone needs to be renewed. Um, so we encourage you to take a look at what your deadline is there and find out uh, if you need to get that zone renewed. You need to have the zone in place so that the business can take advantage of the income tax credit. If, uh, if you don't have the zone in place, then of course that business that's involved in recycling cannot take advantage of this uh, tax credit for themselves. So uh, in the spirit of cooperating with our uh, enterprises out there, I uh, encourage you to take a look at your current recycling zone and make sure that it's up to date. I sent out a letter a couple of weeks ago as a reminder <coughs> that we need shapefile maps. Uh, our intention there is to put those up onto locate.utah.gov and in that uh, instance we can be able to, and the public can see where those recycling zones are. We had uh, an interesting phone call um, just the other day uh, from a company from out of the country who was looking to do business in, uh, in Utah. One thing that was attracting them to Utah was this idea that they could get some income tax credits off of their recycling operations or their potential recycling operations. So this, in fact, was a draw to them, something of interest that they make a decision about where they're going to do business. So that, that could be very important to, uh, to your economic growth, even in your rural counties. Recycling zone is not just uh, limit to uh, uh, rural counties, though. It's also it, it's across the state. It, any county, any city, and mun municipality can can uh, be involved in recycling. So we encourage you, uh, as the letter had uh, been sent out, to send in those shape files. So the question is, how do I get that done? If you don't know how to already. The county or the, the state has provided um, employees who are GIS mapping uh, experts throughout the state. And uh, we'll make sure that we get a contact list out to you to make sure that you know who you can contact in order to get your, G, uh, in, to get, get your shape files uh, created if you haven't have, if you don't have them already. So um, <clears throat> from my um, responsibility going forward here, if you have any questions, you're welcome to give me a call. Uh, send me an email, see if I can answer these questions with regard to recycling zones and, uh, and the BEAR program. I'll try to be as cooperative and as knowledgeable as possible, although I'm still learning. Uh, in the next day or two, you will receive your uh, invoicing and quarterly report uh, via email so that you can begin to fill out your first quarter uh, report. Um, 
And that's all I've got. Thanks, Jake. Thank you very much, James. So uh, just so everybody knows, you know, James, he's, he's only been in our office for, uh, you know, a, a month and a half or so, but he hit the ground running and he is doing an excellent job. So we're excited to have him on our team and, and look forward to uh, seeing all the good work he, he uh, comes up with. Uh, next up, we are going to learn about the high cost infrastructure tax credit uh, with our uh, good buddy. I, I can't, how do you pronounce your name? D Dane Royale. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, he's. I, I've just. Oh, you asked me to remind you to take to record. Are you recording? I am recording. Thanks for the reminder. Uh, I missed our first like ten seconds, but I think I got it just in time. So I'm gonna <laughs> the uh, the presentation over to Dan here. Let me know if you get that, Dan. Got it. Do you want to see my screen? Yep. All right, we good to go? Everyone sees my screen? I think so. I see it. So, we, yep, we should be good. Okay, great. All right. Uh, Dan Royal here. Um, Formerly with the Office of Rural Development, um, uh, for the past three months I've been with the Office of Energy Development. If you've been wondering where have I gone and how come I haven't reached out to you yet, um, I'm with the Office of Energy Development now. Um, I am managing a couple of programs, but the newest and uh, one of the the the, uh, the more uh, notable ones is the High Cost Infrastructure Tax Credit. Uh, it's a, a program uh, that was uh, the brainchild of, of Senator Oakland, uh, and we'll go a little bit, a little bit over the timeline about that. But uh, the purpose of the, the high cost infrastructure tax credit, if I can get my okay, for some reason, well, all right, well. PowerPoint's not responding. Well, give me a quick second. Oh, great. Well, my PowerPoint's disappeared. Sorry, having some uh, technical difficulties here. All right. Hey, Jake, can you still hear me? Yes. Yep, I can still hear you. All right. My, for some reason, my the PowerPoint program is not working. Let me see what I can do. Okay. In the meantime, uh, I will take uh, take over real quick, and I will show um, something that's brand new that I'm going to send out an email on here in uh, probably today or tomorrow, but I can let everybody know a little bit about it right now. So this is called the... Uh, Industrial Construction and Plant Maintenance Expo or, or ex exhibition, I guess you'd say. It's kind of like a trade show. Um, it's coming up on November 8th through 9th at the Southtown Expo Center. Um, basically, it's a way to, uh, as it says over on the side, for anybody that's involved in, in, in industry, construction, or plant maintenance to uh, find new business, demonstrate products, meet people, uh, you know, show off anything new that they've got and answer questions to their customers. Now, the reason why I'm showing this to you guys today uh, is because we have received a special invite from this expo to give uh, huge discounts to any rural companies that uh, would like to have a booth there. So if you'll notice on the side, there's a, a million different products um, that, that are 
shown at this expo. Last year they had about 5,000 people show up and they're hoping to have some more this year. So it's a well attended, well attended show. Um, let me show you the special offers that they are uh, going to give any rural Utah company. So um, they, they've mentioned that they will give a 60% discount, 66% uh, discount to any rural company uh, that would like to share a booth space with, with another company. And they've also said they'd give significant discounts to any rural company that wants to have a booth there. So they really want to see um, as, many, as many companies from rural Utah there as possible. Uh, and so what we'd like to do is, is have you all spread this information to any rural companies that you think would be interested in this. Like I said, I will email this out to you um, later today um, so that you can read through it a little bit more and uh, get a better understanding of what we're talking about. So uh, with that, Dan, how are we doing? Are you about ready? Uh, yeah, it, sh uh, it should be working now, so um, let's try again. Okay, let me switch back over to you. Okay. All right, so let's try this again. Maybe not. All right, Jake, so uh, for some reason, PowerPoint doesn't want to work on my screen. Um, I emailed you the, uh, the slideshow, so you could, uh, let's do it on your computer. Perfect. Let me bring that up. Okay. All right, so um, uh, hop to, to slide number three for me. All right, so the, the high-cost infrastructure tax credit, so the purpose of uh, this program, the high-cost infrastructure tax credit, or the HCITC as we call it, is to uh, provide uh, support uh, for investments in high-cost, cost-intensive infrastructure projects. Uh, the purpose is to allow businesses to continue to expand, allow businesses to, uh, to develop natural resources uh, that's uh, critical to advancing Utah's economy. Um, the program can also be used as a tool to attract businesses to uh, uh, rural Utah. Um, a lot of times when it comes to uh, state programs like the EDTIF program, the, the tax increment financing program, um, a lot of the times uh, when businesses are using that program, they're looking at uh, the landscape in Utah, looking at which uh, area, which city, which county to, to settle in. A lot of the times they choose to settle along the Wasatch Front, um, a lot of times because they can't find the necessary infrastructure uh, necessary to, uh, to uh, run their business. And so the high cost infrastructure tax credit uh, provides a, a, a method that companies can use so that if they are interested in, in going to rural Utah, they can uh, develop the infrastructure and receive a tax credit on it um, for, for that infrastructure development. Um, as a caveat, uh, the high cost infrastructure tax credit cannot be used with state refundable tax credits. EDTIF is one of those refundable tax credits that, that can't be used and com combined with the high cost infrastructure tax credit. It can be used with non-refundable tax credits. For example, uh, the Enterprise Zone tax credit is a non-refundable tax credit. So technically, a company can use Enterprise Zone and um, a high cost infrastructure tax credit um, for the same project. Um, the high cost infrastructure tax credit is also a, uh, another option for companies who might not um, qualify for the, for the EDTIF program. Uh, with EDTIF, there are certain qualifications that need to be met. For example, uh, the companies have to create at least 50 jobs in order to qualify for the EDTIF program. And so for smaller companies who might not be able to meet that requirement, 
the high cost infrastructure tax credits can be used as an, uh, an option uh, when it comes to exploring different uh, programs that companies can take advantage of in order to um, in order to settle in certain areas. Um, also, if, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to, to type them in the chat um, or interrupt me and I can, I can answer those questions for you. I know some of you guys on here have heard this presentation once, twice. Um, you guys are pretty much experts now, but uh, if you have any questions, be sure to, uh, don't hesitate to ask me those questions. Next slide, please, Jake. Yeah, so a little bit about the background uh, when it comes to HCITC. Um, so, uh, like I said earlier, it was the brainchild of uh, Senator Oakland. He began discussions about it with the, the GRPV um, beginning in uh, 2012. Um, the idea was to have a non-refundable tax credit uh, that would help offset the cost of, uh, of infrastructure projects. Um, finally, in 2015, it was presented to the legislature, uh, and it passed, barely passed, but it, it did pass. Um, in 2016, uh, it was revisited by the legislature um, in order to put some administrative changes in the bill, uh, namely to give the Office of Energy Development rulemaking authority, um, and so that was passed in 2016. Um, so this past uh, July, we we uh, codified the uh, the uh, rules. Uh, we've been going through the, the process of developing a pre-application and application and pretty much developing the whole program um, so it can get started. Next slide, please. So how it works. Here's the important part about um, the, the HCITC. So what type of projects? We're looking at new or expanding industrial, manufacturing, mining, and agricultural projects. And this is uh, this program is statewide. It was designed for rural Utah and it'll probably be most effective in rural Utah, but it is a statewide program, which means that companies along the Wasatch Front can take advantage of it, but this was designed for rural Utah. So new or expanding industrial, manufacturing, mining, and agri agricultural projects. Um, when we say industrial and manufacturing, it's meant to be broad, um, and a lot of different projects, a lot of different companies can fall within those two categories, um, and so we want it to be broad. Um, it says uh, the qualify, qualifying infrastructure, um, road improvements or creation, rail spurs, transmission lines, uh, electrical transmission lines, Pipelines, for example, natural gas, and water lines, water delivery lines, uh, would be uh, the, what we call the qualifying infrastructure. Um, in order for a project to be eligible for this program, the cost of the infrastructure development has to be at least 10% of the total capital expenditure. For example, if a project is $1 million, at least $100,000 of that has to be tied directly to the infrastructure development. Um, so at least 10% until you hit $10 million. Once you hit $10 million in infrastructure cost, then there's no 10% uh, threshold. But anything below that, it has to be at least 10% of the total project cost. Uh, the tax credit that a company can receive um, so the whole idea behind this program is, is to help companies expand. And with that expansion brings new state revenue. Well, I'll use that term a few times, new state revenue. And so the tax credit uh, with the HCITC is based on that new state revenue, whether that's uh, a company that's new to Utah, anything that it generates after coming to, to Utah will be considered new state revenue or if a, a, a local company is expanding their operation, whatever that expansion is, whatever revenue is generated from that expansion, that's what we call new state revenue. And so the tax credit is 30% of that new state revenue, 30% of the new state revenue. The cap for this, project, for this program is 50% of, uh, of the original infrastructure cost. 
So using that example again, if my, um, if my project is $1 million, 10% uh, of that has to be um, $100,000. So that's what my minimum infrastructure costs have to be in order for that project to be eligible. So you're looking at $100,000. The cap would be $50,000, which is half of the cost of the infrastructure, $100,000. So my company can receive 30% tax credit over uh, annually until I hit that cap of $50,000, which represents half of the infrastructure cost. Um, so that's the cap, 50% or 20 years. So a company can receive 30% tax credit on a new state revenue annually until one, it either hits 20 years or two, it hits that 50% cap, whichever comes first. Uh, so that's the tax credit a company can receive. Um, we also have a, uh, a, a section of the program that deals with refineries. Um, a few years ago, the EPA passed a new fuel standard called Tier 3 fuel standard, uh, which refineries have to meet. Um, depending on the size of the refinery and depending on how many barrel, barrels of, of uh, oil they, they refine per day, um, they have to meet that target either by the beginning of 2017, or they can defer uh, until 2020. For our refineries here in, in, in Utah on the Wasatch Front, they're small enough to be able to defer until 2020. However, uh, recognizing that there are benefits to the air and to uh, there are health benefits to meeting that standard, we are providing this incentive for them as well in order for them to meet that, uh, that standard sooner rather than later. But we don't need to think much about that because uh, uh, we we're not really dealing with the refineries uh, with this group. But, uh, next slide, please, Jake. Yeah, so the process. So those who are familiar with the rule of fast track will find that this is, um, is a very uh, uh, recognizable process. Um, Jake, can you, can, actually, can you switch back uh, the control to me? I want to sh show you on the, uh, the free application. Thanks. Uh, so the process, like I said, is, is patterned after the rule of fast track process. Um, in order for a company to start the, the process, they have to submit a pre-application, which will be available uh, on our website. And actually, the pre-application is live. It went live yesterday. Uh, we're still working out a few things. Um, uh, and so, uh, but the, the pre-application is live. If you are interested in, in uh, sending out the URL to, to some companies, um, either go to our website. It's not on there quite yet. It will be on there today. Um, so if you go to our website and you don't see it there, reach out to me. My email is the same, droyal at utah.gov. Uh, reach out to me and I'll give you the URL uh, to get the ball rolling to send out to companies and things like that. Uh, but just to give you guys a preview of what that looks like, um, it's really simple, uh, really easy to fill out, uh, the pre-application. Let's see if I can pull that up. Um, there are a few uh, uh, words about the process here. Uh, nothing too serious. Um, the first question um, deals with whether you are the company who will be receiving the tax credit. We call that the infrastructure cost burden entity. Or if you're a third party. We, can, we allow um, third party companies to fill out the application on behalf of the company who are receiving the tax credit, um, whether that's uh, accounting firms, law firms, engineering firms, uh, architecture, uh, contractors, things like that. We allow them to fill it out on behalf of the company that they're representing. Um, so uh, they can choose that here. But anyway, uh, if they choose infrastructure cost burden entity, um, it goes, yeah, it asks for company information, address, um, federal tax ID number, the next code, uh, contact information, so on and so forth. I, I don't think I can move on. Yeah, won't let me. Um, let me see if I can move on like this. Um, 
this is just the the, the back end of, of the uh, pre-application. So it will ask um, project information, where the project's located, whether that's a street address, GPS coordinates, if it doesn't have a street address. Um, ask uh, what types of infrastructure will be developed, the cost, job creation, uh, anticipated project start date, completion dates, the year that uh, that the company anticipates um, receiving revenues. Uh, it'll ask for the um, a, pro a project description where you can either upload or type it in. Um, it'll ask a few questions, just quick questions. You know, um, will will the infrastructure be in Utah? Will the will the facility be in Utah, uh, if you have a business license, if you have any permits, if you have uh, site control of the project. Um, once uh, you hit submit, uh, let me show you guys this. So this is the absolute last page. You hit, I, I certify that everything is true, blah, blah, blah. You hit save and submit there at the bottom. Once, uh, once the person hits that, um, they get a notification, a confirmation in the e uh, via email that it's been submitted. Um, I also get a uh, email saying someone has submitted a, a pre-application, uh, and it goes into the uh, the uh, review round. I'll review it uh, within a week, week and a half. They'll have it reviewed. I'll contact the company. Uh, Jake, you can switch back to to your your computer now. Yes. Um, I'll con contact the company um, to uh, let them know uh, I've, I've reviewed it, everything looks good. Uh, if, if everything checks out, if everything appears to be satisfied, I will send them a uh, notification that their, um, their, their project has now gone to the full application round, um, and they'll receive uh, the full application. Uh, they fill that out, they hit submit, it comes to me. I'll review it, make sure everything looks okay. Um, if everything looks okay, I will schedule a meeting with them, uh, with myself and Dr. Laura Nelson, who is the executive director of the Office of Energy Development. Um, we'll get together, we'll review the project, ask in-depth questions, uh, so on and so forth. If everything checks out, then we will recommend that the project moves on to what we call the Utah Energy Infrastructure Authority Board, um, who is the, the, the last say when it comes to uh, the projects, um, but we do want to vet the projects well enough that if it does reach the uh, Utah Energy Infrastructure Board, um, that it's uh, that it's almost a done deal. They'll still review it, but like I said, we want to vet it enough to for them to know that it's going through that process, and uh, it wouldn't be in front of them if we didn't think it's a good project and worthy of receiving the tax credit. So, next um, slide there. Um, a little bit about the Utah Energy Infrastructure Authority Board. Um, like I said, it's it's the the last line of defense when it comes to to the uh, this this tax credit um, and the final say. Um, the board is comprised of uh, of uh, it's first off it's chaired by Dr. Nelson, uh, but it's also comprised of uh, representatives uh, represented from GoEd. Uh, we have the director of CITLA. Uh, uh, we have uh, rural uh, county commissioners, um, one of them being um, uh, Commissioner Todd from Duchesne County. I think he's actually on the, the, the webinar right now, but uh, Commissioner Todd from Duchesne County. Uh, we've got Lynn Jackson from Grand County. Uh, we've got uh, some representatives from, uh, from utilities, um, one of them uh, being um, um, Questar. Uh, we have someone representing uh, a law firm that's uh, experts in um, public bonding and public finance, and so we've got a, this uh, this group that's um, that's pretty well represented across the state, um, and so they are the ones who will look at the project and give the final say when it comes uh, to uh, assigning tax credits. Uh, next slide, please. So I've got a, a couple examples here. Hold on, let me. I got uh, a couple examples, three examples actually, well, two mostly. Uh, example one uh, is a, a turkey operation of Paiute County who receives a contract from Norbest to uh, to provide turkeys. Uh, so the company 
in order to meet this uh, this contract, they have to expand uh, by building new, ten new poultry sheds. Keep in mind that this is hypothetical. Uh, this is just examples. So they invest five million dollars in order to build ten new poultry sheds. Of that five million dollars, two million is used to install natural gas lines to upgrade the power lines. Um, uh, so with the, this expanded operation, the company will have new uh, have new gross sales of four million dollars and new state revenue of one hundred fifty thousand dollars in each of the next twenty years. So. Um, the tax credit will equal 30% on an annual basis. So 30% of that new state revenue, 150,000, would equal 45,000. So they can get $45,000 in tax credits. Um, and once again, keep in mind this is all hypothetical. 45,000 tax credits over uh, annually until it hits 20 years or it hits that 50% cap. Uh, in this type of situation, in this example. Um, this uh, turkey farm wouldn't realize their full $1 million of uh, tax credit. They would max out at $90,000, uh, $900,000 after 20 years. So that's, that's uh, an example using the turkey sheds. Uh, next slide, Jake. Yes. Um, here's another example of a, uh, of a, uh, a mining operation in Carbon County. They're looking at uh, a new mining venture in Emory County. So in order to get that mine up and running, they uh, invest a total of $25 million uh, to get it operating. Of that $25 million, $2 million is used to build a road, and $3 million is used to build a, uh, a railroad spur to their facility. So um, the infrastructure development will be 20% of their initial capex which means that it qualifies um, under that 10% rule. So the company has gross sales of $12.5 million over, uh, uh, annually and new state revenue of $750,000 over the next 20 years. Um, so with the tax credit, 30% of, um, of $750,000 is $225,000. So they would receive that $225,000, once again, hypothetical situation. They've uh, received $225,000 over um, annually until it hits 20 years, or it receives half of their uh, original infrastructure uh, inf investment, which will be $2.5 million in this case. So in this example, ABC Mining Venture Company would receive uh, their full $2.5 million credit after 12 years, at which time their tax credit period would come to an end. Um, do I have a, uh, yeah, we can skip this one. This has to do refinery, so you can skip that one. Yes, uh, so that, that's, that's it. Um, do I have any questions in regards to this, this tax credit program, high cost infrastructure tax credit? All right, great. Um, uh, like I said, the full, the, the pre-application Pre-application is live right now. Um, I will be putting it the URL on our website today. Um, we, there's some some content we have to work out with uh, a couple other applications that will be in the same domain. Um, uh, but uh, if you uh, have companies who are interested, I know a few of you out there do. Um, don't hesitate to contact me, droyal at utah.gov. Give me a call. Uh, my number is, uh, I'll put it in the chat, but number is, my new number is 801-538-8729 is my new number, uh, my office number. Uh, I'm not in the office right now, so, so uh, you won't get me. But send me an email. Let me know that you have companies interested. I will I'll give you the URL, um, and uh, you can send that out to those companies, and they can get started on uh, doing the pre-application. The full application should be ready to go. Um, by uh, by Friday, the full application should be ready. Um, so they can get the, the, the ball rolling on doing the pre-application. Like I said, once they hit submit, it will come to me, um, and uh, we can we can get started like that. Um, if I don't have any other questions, I'll uh, turn the time back over to, to Jake, and uh, um, we'll talk to you guys uh, next time I talk to you guys.
All right. Thank you very much, Dan. Did we did we have any questions then? One last time for Dan. If so, put them into the uh, chat line, or I can unmute you if you'd like. Um, but uh, next up, we uh, have Tom Adams with the Office of Outdoor Recreation. Uh, Tom, are you on? I am here, Jay. Awesome. So Tom's just going to give us a quick update about the Office of Outdoor Recreation. All yours, Tom. Thanks, Jake, and thanks, uh, Rural Team, for having me. Um, as Jake said, my name is Tom Adams. I'm the director of the Office of Outdoor Recreation. And uh, right now, I'm, I'm thrilled to be on the call because we're celebrating some of the most exciting things that have happened to the office really since our inception. Um, many of you uh, may have submitted grant applications to the Utah Outdoor Recreation Grant. That's what we're uh, dealing with right now. We're about eyeballs deep um, in applications. We were awarded a million dollars unanimously from the ha from our legislators last year, and all those funds went into into the grant. The grant for us, we split it into two parts. We have an infrastructure portion to the grant, and we have a youth education um, portion to the grant. So really, we have two grants in one. Um, but what's exciting is we it's a 50-50 match grant. We had three million dollars um, of requested 50-50 match. But the total project value that was sent in to us um, was over $13 million. So um, we're really seeing a strong demand for outdoor recreation and education programs around it. And uh, I'm grateful to everybody for you know, adopting that and trying to uh, put these programs and infrastructure into your communities. Um, with that said, nearly all of the grants that have been initially awarded on the infrastructure side are going to rural communities, so that's exciting to see, especially for this call. Um, and we're going through the youth program this week. So we're going to be starting that. We'll probably have those finalized by the middle of next month um, once we go through our committees here and uh, get all the approvals. So thanks, everybody, for submitting. And uh, we're excited to get these out. Um, and for those, there are $13 million out there, and we only have a $1 million to give. So um, there are going to be some letters telling people that they, they weren't awarded. But in those letters, we're also going to look for alternative funding sources, too. So we're going to do our best within our office to let people know why they didn't qualify and um, where else they can go to look for funds, because we want to see these projects happen. Um, the last thing that we're doing, and some of you may have attended, we've, instead of holding one outdoor recreation summit in Salt Lake, which we've done in the past, which has always been a great event, but um, definitely alienates some people that can't make the long trip. As opposed to doing one, we've done three. And so far, we've had a summit in Ogden on September 1st, September 14th. We just wrapped up one in Cedar City. Both of those were phenomenal events, um, sold out. If not, we're very close to selling out in terms of the space we had. And uh, Moab, which is about 15 seats away from selling out, is on October 5th. So for anybody in that region, um, we have a great lineup. If you go to utahoutdoorsummit.com, You'll be able to click on Moab and uh, choose the agenda. But we have a, a wonderful lineup down there and um, some great events happening pre-summit and post-summit. If you have any questions on that, you can reach out to myself or Tara McKee. Or again, everything is at utahoutdoorsummit.com. So um, that's pretty much it for me, Jake. Unless anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Appreciate it, Tom. And I, I attended the uh, outdoor conference in Cedar last week, and it was excellent. And I, I look forward to the one in Moab here coming up sh soon. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Tom or for the Office of Outdoor Recreation? Not seeing anything. Perfect. Thanks, Tom. So uh, just to end, uh, uh, once again, I appreciate everybody joining us on these rural webinars. I have recorded this session, and uh, I'll get that uh, get that link to that recording out to everybody later this afternoon, um, if not tomorrow, uh, and that way you can go back and look at it. But if you have any questions about Bear, uh, contact James Dixon. Any questions about the high cost infrastructure tax credit? Contact Dan Royal, or any uh, questions for Tom in the Office of Outdoor Recreation? Contact them. And as always. Uh, if, if you don't have their contact information, just uh, get a hold of get a hold of me, and I will connect you to them. So, uh, Linda, did you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I just appreciate everybody joining us online. And again, if you missed um, something or want to go back and review something, um, these these sessions are recorded. So um, please share. 
And thanks, Jake, for putting this together. And James, you did it. And Dan, you did a great job. And Tom. Yeah, don't forget. Okay, okay well, with that, we will end the webinar. I, once again, I appreciate everybody. And uh, we will uh, I, I get uh, our next webinar will be in October. Um, October uh, 18th, and I'll get that information out to you shortly. So thank you, everyone.